This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 10th of February and let's get into it. An issue was found on 8x8, which is a global cloud communications provider, and this issue was a remote code execution through a .NET vState deserialization. But what is the .NET vState? Well, vState stands for view state, which is um, a parameter that contains information about the state of the user. User. This view state is serialized and then sent over to the server where it's deserialized. And that causes some issues because it, this is some insecure deserialization where the user can input some things. So using this insecure deserialization, this researcher was able to achieve an RCE on higher logic community. They tried to report this to higher logic community, but they did not respond. And luckily through eight times eight, they were able to get this responsible disclosure in. So a huge congratulations, zero days to live on this finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 11th of February and let's get into it. A blind out of band command injection was found on the tech giant IBM. So this researcher noticed an endpoint, a password create endpoint with an email parameter. He tried to inject some data and upon trying for a command injection, he noticed something interesting. So he sent a request that had two pipe characters followed by a ping command that would take 10 seconds and he noticed that that request indeed took 10 seconds. These two pipe characters in Windows mean that if the previous command fails, then execute the second one. And that is what happened in this case. So a huge congratulations, smoking aces for this finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 12th of February and let's get into it. An IDOR vulnerability was found on Acronis. Now Acronis is a cyber protection solutions company and they have a website devicelog.com. Now on that website, they have a support and you can create support tickets. However, an issue was found there because when this researcher tried to edit one of his tickets, he noticed that through changing the ID parameter, he could get access to any ticket created on the website. So a huge congratulation, Hexor underscore DZ for your finding and your 250 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 13th of February and let's get into it. An arbitrary file read was found in the Rocket Chat desktop application. Now Rocket Chat is a really cool uh, chatting uh, mechanism where you can create servers and chat with people and an administrator can create a server. Now an attacker can also set up a malicious server and they can add in a certain script that will execute for uh, logged in users. Now in this script, the attacker could input a window dot open and then use the file wrapper. So file colon slash slash and then any file on uh, the victim system. Then when the victim would join that server, his file would get read, which is an arbitrary file read. So a huge congratulations Sectex on this finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 14th of February. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Um, but let's get into it. An issue was found on Shopify, a global e-commerce platform. Um, and they have a whole GraphQL API system and certain members with certain permissions can make certain calls. However, the researcher found that a staff member with settings permissions can make a call to create a notification subscription. Now, so far that all sounds good. However, the server will reply with an access denied. And that is normal, that's expected. But the issue is that the server for some reason still creates that notification subscription. Um, whereas obviously it shouldn't and it knows it shouldn't because it replies that way. However, it still does it. So a huge congratulations NGA log for finding this cool finding. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 15th of February and let's get into it. An issue was found in Node.js by Google. This issue has to do with certificates and things being bypassed using string injections. But what does that all mean? Well, we have certificates and we can view them in text form. However, certificates are not text. Certificates, uh, they use a structured binary encoding called DER there and fields may contain commas, spaces or any other byte 
possible. This text representation can just be used for debugging purposes to view it, but it should not be used in your program as then people would be able to inject strings into your certificates and your parsing of your program would, for example, split on commas and whatnot, and that would cause a lot of issues. And Google found that in Node.js, this text representation was being used for, for example, verifying the identity of a server, which is not good, and that's why they reported it to Node.js. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 16th of February, and let's get into it. An issue was found on GitLab that allowed an attacker to let the victim make arbitrary requests through a Jupyter Notebook. Now, Jupyter Notebook allows a rich output via HTML, and that is sanitized by GitLab, which is great. However, their sanitization does not remove data dash attributes. And using a jQuery-UJS gadget, this researcher was able to let the victim make arbitrary requests, which could include changing the attacker's permission on that GitLab instance, which is an issue that IWIS got a 1500 USD bounty for, so a huge congratulations. 